people now don't appreciate what the 60s did for them. Now, now everybody runs around with costumes, with long hair. You know, one can virtually wear anything at this point. But this wasn't so until somewhere the middle, late 60s. I, at one point, was teaching in Berkeley, and people came to class in loincloths. And that was appropriate. Now, uh, the whole business of men wearing much longer hair, uh, sandals, all of that came in. So there was a dramatic change in the way people appeared and looked. There was a, a very different way of talking, of course. Now, uh, some of it became very, very quickly sort of de you know, deteriorated towards the vulgar. That, you know, the more four-letter words you could use, especially in class vis-a-vis -vis a teacher, the more left you clearly had managed yourself to, to, to identify. Uh, I think as far as teaching goes, you would have to say it was good and bad. It was both. No? It was good in the sense that, boy, you know, there was a sense of don't horse around with us. Now, don't just talk about things that don't matter. You better deliver. You know? And there was a sense of we want something from you. We're here, and we're not here to waste our time. And this is totally different from now. Now you have the feeling that they are docile, they are cowed, they're willing to put up with absolutely everything. No matter what you would say to them, they will faithfully write it down in their notes and reproduce it. None of that was in the 60s. On the other side, there was this impatience, no? also had its obvious, no, it's easy to think out, sort of negative effects. That if you wanted to say, now wait, 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 I mean, this will take a little time, it'll pay off, but give me some time to explain how this really has to be understood. And I'll need a, you know, a little time to lay foundations. Or so. Very difficult to do. And, and no, in general, no, sort of, there was a sense of, uh, I mean, quite literally, you know, sort of that, that people didn't want to have any structure. And this went to the extent of saying, let's abolish a schedule. Let's meet whenever we want to meet. Now, no, no preordained time. Let's abolish teachers. Anybody can get up who wants to get up, who has something to say. And people were quite serious about this. And in fact, to my mind, this was such a sort of grotesque misunderstanding of what freedom meant. And still, that's what freedom did mean to everybody, that that's prompted me to write the book about freedom. You have to look at this from both sides, that uh, yes, no, clearly, there were some things that probably they didn't learn, because they didn't have the patience for it. But no, if you insist on the comparison, no, right now, the whole country is belly aching and whining about the fact that we don't have enough imagination, we don't have enough initiative, we don't have people who have any get up and go, we don't have people who are dedicated to things. Everybody sort of just quickly wants to get a safe little career and stash away something actress and have done with it. Well, th that was different in the 60s. Now, what they learned, boy, did they assimilate it, boy, did it mean something. And there was a sense of now, really acquiring knowledge. Now, if you talked, for example, I, I at the time was, was teaching uh, Camus, I was teaching Sartre, I was teaching about freedom, I was teaching Nietzsche, I was teaching political philosophy. Well, it, wasn't, it had really not that much to do with, with my teaching, but you couldn't get into the class. You know, because people wanted that stuff. And, and, and maybe a good example would be is how people reacted to literature. I mean, to teach literature now, and I do some of it, is a pale, no, a pale, miserable chore compared to what it was like to teach literature then. Because when people at that point read Hesse, or even Hemingway, or Faulkner, or whatever they read, they related it to their own experience, and you know, they went too far sometimes. They took it and they lived it out. You know? They read something, and the next day they acted as if they were a character in Hesse. And that was gorgeous in one way. But of course, if you wanted to teach something that they weren't interested in, they had wax in their ears. <laughs>